Hello YouTubers. I'm going to try to do a video on one of these Frick log turners. It's just kind of an informational thing. Um, I'm going to show you a few pictures. I'm going to do it in two part. This one's going to be all the physical pieces and then the part two is going to be of catalog stuff. I made one yesterday but it really turned out worse than my normal worse. So this is what we're going to be looking at. First I'm going to go down to the books and show you what it is in the book. I'm trying not to go too fast. Yesterday I realized that I went too fast and it it would have made even a sailor seasick. All right. Here's what we're going to be looking at. This part right here, then the shaft that goes down, and then the mechanisms that are up in here. This is on a number two mill. Maybe you can read it and get the specs if you want it on the number two mill. This catalog here is this one here. It's one of my favorite catalogs showing freak out in the woods and during the snow. There, I'm trying to make it pretty, pretty still. I don't know what year it is. Now I'm going to go, I guess I'll go over to this and see if I can get it. These are the this is the parts thing. I'm going to do this part in the next section too. I want to put it on a um, easel. This this stuff here is missing. It's up at the Carroll County Steam Show because that's where one of these the sawmill that had it on it was taken up there and it was too hard to take this part off. But all these other parts are all all here. Now I'm going to go up and do, oh that one part that was, was missing, if you go to, on my YouTube channel, number 100 Frick Sawmill at the Mason Dixon show, around 103 or 157, you'll see that, that section, it's got a regular tire on it. Now here's something, I'm trying to get in as close as... The wind is killing me here today. You should have seen the wind yesterday. Everything went bananas there. I'm hoping you can read that on your computer at home. I'm getting down to five, so now I go down to five. That's the second section. And this will go down to the bottom section. And up here we're going nine to I don't know how far. Hopefully you can read that. There's some more reading. And here's... Oops, I might have gone too far. I'm trying to hold it still so you can read it if you're interested in it. And this is the basic picture of it again. A little bit of wording that went with it. Now we'll go look at the actual parts. Like I said, on this stuff here, it's still on the main mandrel on the sawmill that it got. The sawmill got sold. It went to the Mason Dixon Steam Show 2019, and in around 103 or 157 you'll see this section of this log turner there it's uh, number 100 Frick sawmill so if you want to look that up and see that because that's not going to be here now we'll go up and this is kind of the long long shot of this the part the part over here is drives off the main mandrel and this comes up to the front and that runs this big I guess rack and pinion gear or bull gear I don't know 
this shaft here has been cut off. That's what it looks like. And this section here on this one is broke. This is there's three different log turners in this in this movie. This to get together to get this one good one, there's three different ones getting put together. There's all the mechanisms if you want to see what it looks like. Hopefully the sun won't get you too bad. There's a that little wheel down there has rubber on it. Now this shaft, like I say, was cut off. This is an 18-foot shaft or 16-foot shaft. Now I'm gonna make you seasick. Here's another one. Like I said, this is many, many, three different ones. There's the end of it, and it comes all the way down, goes through. This is the better one that we got, but that would go through. Now, mind you, this is backwards. Some of it's backwards. Here's. Here's a, one of the gear orientations. These are the cams that make it go. If I get this way, I think you can see the, the, cam, the cam on it. I wish I was a little more steady. The big bull gear. This gear, this gear and the one down there are the same. And I'm guessing, I don't know if you can see that cast number in there. I think that's the same too, but I, I haven't really looked. And here's, here's the other cam. Now, if you notice, they run 180 degrees out of sync, I think, or somewhere around there. And that's so you get a, a push on this side, then a push on this side, then a push on this side of these... Here's another set of those spikes or dogs or whatever. Now, this particular setup here has this pinion gear instead of that large one down there. I hope I'm not making you too seasick going around. These pieces here there's one there and there's one over there those are the brackets that mount the mechanism or that whole assembly that we showed you with a 90 degree gear mounts it underneath the husk assembly that's the part there that holds this gear into place I'm gonna go back down there and show you hopefully you won't get too seasick this is <coughs> this is this piece here and goes over there. There's a casting number on it there. It looks like 969C. I forget what the casting numbers of these are. But that mounts it down below the husk. So these went in between the husk. Now I think they made three different sizes of these and I'm not sure that it was just entirely Frick. Um, I think maybe some other company made them but the Frick numbers go to Frick numbers I, I, I don't know how it works they're in the Frick book but if you go to a geyser book you'll find this set up in geyser also and a couple other sawmill companies now this came in okay you had the shaft all the way down there that would have been on the husk comes underneath the Sawyer's position and all the way up to this this turner here now sometimes they ran this this gear directly into the bull gear and sometimes they put this this uh, intermediate shaft in there. I'm not quite sure. I'd had it a little bit figured out why they did that. It's either to move it down a foot or to reverse it or just what exactly it did. I, I'm not quite sure. Now this here is what's left. They made this whole unit in a wooden a wooden um, frame, I guess. And there was no, no babbit or no, nothing on these. It was just all made out of wood. Now the um, geyser one, I think, had a cast frame that all these pieces went in. So consequently, you had some serious amount of rust getting on there. You can see this is all on wood. 
I'll go back and show you. Now this thing here, it would have a piece at the top and the bottom. And the two bolts bolted together down there on that shaft. And they act as a some kind of clutching mechanism for it. Don't know exactly exactly what. You can see the, the cutouts that went in around the wheels. Or I mean went around yeah, went around the bull gear, I'm sorry. And they're all they all sit sit flat, so this and this were on the same plane. I'll go back and show you in the book now that I've mentioned and you can review it. Here's another another dogging setup that went with this particular log turner. This one here is a little bit a little bit better together, a little nicer. You can see how it goes up and down on the cam there. I've just got this bolted together. There's a bolt that comes through in this location that goes in this slide here. So when these these things are going up and down, up and down, pushing on the log, it kind of stays in time, I guess. Here's those wooden pieces right here and here. And it, there was bolts and you clamped it together to get you the right amount of friction that you needed to make it stand up when it was coming. There's just another extra piece. Um, so that's what it looks like. I'll, I'll jump up on the um, log deck. And there's there's a sawmill in the background. Let me go down and show you that wooden box that this thing set in. So you know kind of what I'm talking about that was it's all it was was in a wooden box. I'm not I'm trying not to make you too dizzy here. You really can't see it too well in this picture here. Um this is this is that bracketry that holds it down underneath the carriage gives it a step there's the part of the mechanism to make it go and not go these are the those things that we were just showing you bull gear and all that kind of stuff here's the mechanism where it goes on to the mandrel or drives off the main mandrel let me see if I can find in here that page where it's got it all right, you can see it here. See, all this was wood. It was all in wood. And there's the shaft that goes up. Seems to me that'd be very, very trip hazard in the uh, thing. But that's the 18, 16 foot shaft there. And I think that's why they made it so you could make it down a little further, up a little further, depending on what you want. And there's all the mechanisms. Now the different so the different sizes had them hooked up different ways. So it depends. That's that's how this one here was. I'm gonna get up on the um, get up on the deck of the sawmill here. So you're gonna get a little seasick for a minute. If anybody knows of one that's running, I'd like to see it and see it move, see it work. But I haven't, I don't know of anybody that's got one going. Also have a set of, uh, I guess they call them L's. They're um, Ott L's, zero, single zero. They're, oh, 12, 15 C's. If anybody needs some. One's in real good shape. One has no wear on it. The other ones have a little bit of wear on it. Eh, well, while we're here, we'll take a quick shot of the old sawmill. Maybe I'll get it going this year. Further along, all right. Here's just a big box of wasted bolts. That's all they are is for so somebody can figure out the dimension, the length that they need to be. Here's the back side of this thing here. You can see where the bottom part of that clutching assembly went in there. I'll show you that in a minute. And it tightened down on that section of shaft right there. And that's what gave it the grip to flip. Um, there's one of those hang down brackets. It looks like 906C. Oh, here it is. You can see this one here. 906C. 
here's the what's left of this thing when it was put together. It was pretty rotted, but wood can be replaced without too much trouble. This is the bottom. This is those. This is those clutches, and they basically went together like this, and then this piece went on there, and then you clamped it down to whatever whatever bite you needed to get those to flip up which those are the wooden parts in here that's the bull gear you can see the different colors this is red now that number there is a 80 892c I have to go up and look at one of those see if it's an 892c if I can see it on there here's one complete see this one's red this one's turquoise this one's red but then these up here are turquoise this actually came from that other that other mill uh, uh, thing up there. Here's a uh, looks like a one five one one maybe. I can't can't really tell. I got it sideways on the camera anyway. Here's a that looks like a a nine hundred nine hundred C. You can see the the uh, rubber thing there. This is what it looks like from the other angle. That's that, that I think is about about covers it. Or well, that's a big looking odd piece. Looks like some kind of torture device. Here's the wheel off of this one. Maybe I'll have a casting number. There it is. Looks like looks like 1064 1064C. But there's a different number over here. Let's see, I was gonna look inside. I don't know if there's a left hand one of these and a, and a right hand one. That's a looks like 890. 892C, which I think that's what that other one was. All right, well that's about it. The bull, these, these two gears are the same, same part number. I, I looked them up. That's about it for this video. The next one's going to be just uh, books and numbers for people that are looking for numbers for this stuff. So, if there's anybody interested or seen one, I'd really like to see it. And if there's anybody interested in a set of OLs, I'd really like to sell those. So that's about it for this show. This is about probably the weirdest thing you're ever going to see on YouTube. Beast is a... That's what it looks like. Over and out.